Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel Blue Lady Couture and welcome to the beautiful city of Bath. If you can't tell already, I am here today for the Jane Austen Festival. It is the big opening day of the festival and I'm doing things a little bit differently this year. I'm trading this year. So I have just parked the car down at the Charlotte Street car park and I'm just on my way back to the assembly rooms where I have left Mr. BLC guarding all the stock at ready for us to set it up for the festival fair this afternoon. And the festival fair will open once the grand promenade has made its way through the streets of Bath and reached the assembly rooms and then I'm hoping there will be lots of shopping lots of people looking to purchase some outfits and some accessories from me um, so yes yeah, so it's my first time trading this year so I'm just passing through the beautiful park here um, car park is at the bottom of the, of the park and you walk up through the park here past the spectacular Royal Crescent uh, and then just through the circus uh, we get to the assembly rooms um, yeah so beautiful weather Beautiful September sunshine here in England today, uh, which makes a change because it's been really cold all week and I was praying it wasn't going to be cold, wet and raining. But yes, it's, it's beautiful, blue sky, September sunshine, a little bit cool at the moment as it is at this time of year. Um, so I've got my, my shawl on to keep me nice and warm. Um, but yes, it should be a lovely afternoon. So let's go for a, yeah, walk up to the assembly rooms. Oh, and by the way, Bath and North East Somerset Council, £17 to park for 24 hours. Are you actually kidding me? That's extortionate. And I'm sure that's a lot more expensive than it was last year. But here we are in Bath. It is a big, big tourist city, so, you know, it's understandable why they charge so much. But still, £17. That's ouchy. That's ouchy. <laughs> Just behind me here is number one Royal Crescent, and that's a museum which is basically set up to show you what life was like living in the houses on the Royal Crescent in the 18th century. <laughs> I'm 
morning everybody and welcome to day two at the Jane Austen Festival here in Bath. I hope you enjoyed some of the little bits of footage that I took um, at the festival fair yesterday afternoon. Obviously unfortunately because I was working, trading, it wasn't really possible for me to film much of the day. Um, it's very busy at the festival fair. Um, the Grand Promenade finishes at the fair at the assembly room so everybody spills over into uh, into the fair and it just yeah it's very busy very manic um yeah very hectic afternoon um but it was yeah, a wonderful day wonderful first time trading at the event um we were in the slightly quieter card room off to the side uh, but i think next year um if i'm invited to trade if i'm invited back to trade again i will I do apologise if you can hear any background noise, obviously we're in the middle of the city of Bath and there's uh, crossings and traffic lights and things around us, so um, yeah. Yeah, if we're invited back to trade again next year, I will probably opt to trade on the Friday afternoon as well, which means I can go in the main ballroom, um, which is um, a much lighter, brighter room. And it's a much busier room at the fair as well. Um, but that being said, we had a really excellent day. Thank you every... Thank you ever so much to everyone who stopped by the store, complimented me on my wares and you know, my items that I make. Um, everybody who bought something from me, you all seem to love the little bookmarks uh, that I made with the little quotes on and my little uh, business postcards, uh, which I put some of the little quotes on as well. Some of you love them so much that you took about five of my business cards. So I do hope you pass them on to other people <laughs> or I'm gonna have to start charging for, you know, for business postcards. Um, yes, it was also lovely to meet some of you who follow the channel and have watched my previous vlogs. Uh, so that's fabulous. Thank you so much for saying hi and saying that you enjoy my vlogs. It's always lovely to hear from people, um, you know, what you enjoy watching on the channel and things like that. Uh, yes, yeah, so do let me know down in the comments if, you, uh, if you're here and you've seen me. And then, of course, I had some lovely visits from clients in their outfits that I've made for them, which, again, is just, you know, that makes me so, so happy to see people enjoying, you know, wearing what I've made. And they look, look fabulous in their full costumes. Uh, so I don't always get to see the, uh, the, final, the final result. Um, but, yeah, it's lovely. Lovely seeing you stop by the store just to, to show you, you know, show you what I've made and how you're styling it and how you're wearing it your new bonnets and everything it's fabulous today's plan is um, the festival fair only happens on the Saturday afternoon which is great in that if I'm trading at the festival then I can still enjoy the festival um, on the other days uh, I did miss not being able to take part in the grand promenade unfortunately you know being trading I had to be ready and they're setting up in the morning uh, and then there wasn't time to get up to the the promenade to, to join the promenade back to then be ready at the stall um, as soon as everybody gets there so yeah so that's a shame that I didn't get to do the promenade because I think it is one of the highlights of the festival if you want to watch my previous videos um, from last year you'll see that I, I did take part in the Grand Promenade so you can see some of that footage on there um, it really is wonderful you know there's nearly a thousand of us that promenade through the streets of Bath all in all in full period costumes so it's yeah an amazing sight and amazing thing to be part of so yeah do go check those videos out um, yeah so today the plan is we're going to head up towards Sydney Gardens um, which is where we're going to find the camp full of soldiers um, as you know, a la Lydia Bennett style <laughs> and uh, we're going to see what's happening there I think they're doing some talks and demonstrations um, of uh, you know uh, Regency military so that should be interesting I'll try and get some footage for you guys uh, and then afterwards in Sydney Gardens uh, there's going to be a picnic so we're going to just nip to one of the delicatessens here in Bath and pick up some sandwiches and some uh, little nibbles and some drinks and yeah make our way up to Sydney Gardens Uh, 
of amuse me because it literally just brought a boat up. I love the old fashioned chemist next door. How beautiful is that? And it is still a chemist. Oh wow, like the giant potion bottles. interesting little chemist shop. And it says, did you know Jane Austen's mother was treated here when she was very ill and almost died? We have a copy of the poem she wrote during her recovery. One of the things I love about Bath is that there's just so much history on, you know, everywhere, on every street that you walk on. It's just so fabulous. Oh, we're just passing one of the Jane Austen walking tours going in the opposite direction. Yes, if you come to the yeah. festival, there's so many events happening um, and you can basically pick and choose um, mm -hmm. what you want to do. Um, so rather than a, you know, just one kind of ticket or wristband for the entirety of the festival, um, because basically there's just so much to do, I don't think you could do everything and it would just be so inordinately expensive um, that it just wouldn't, it wouldn't work. Um, so yes, yeah, so you can basically pick and choose the events you want to go to, whether it's the balls, the dance classes, walking tours around the city of Bath. Uh, they also do like minibus tours um, to places out further afield. Um, places like uh, Le Coq, where um, they filmed Pride and Prejudice. Uh, and they also filmed uh, some Harry Potter and lots of other famous you know, movies and TV series, Downton Abbey, for example, is another one that was filmed out there. Um, you can check out my vlog of that <laughs> if you want as well. We visited there last year. Um, and they also do tours out to where Jane Austen lived at Chawton in Hampshire. And that is on my list of places I would like to get to and so I can film a vlog for you all. Um, but it's not going to be quite yet. Um, but yeah, it's, it's on my list. I will get there at some point. Let me know if you want me to go and do that vlog and I will make it happen as soon as I can. Um, maybe next year because obviously it's the big 250th anniversary of Jane Austen's birth next year so uh, yes lots of big celebrations for that I can't wait for so we shall see but yes at the moment we're just walking down beautiful Great Pulteney Street which is just one of those fabulous Georgian streets here in Bath just yeah oh it's just so lovely to be here <laughs> by any of these newfangled horses carriages that are zooming around the streets. is the Holborn Museum, which is where we're hopefully going to find a camp full of soldiers. And behind there is Sydney Gardens, we're having a picnic. Then the road just down to the left over there, um, that's where you can find four Sydney Place, I think it is. Um, I've got the number right, and that's where Jane Austen lived um, for a few years when she was living in Bath.
handsome, ladies and gentlemen. Note that I'm a legally married, mm. legally married <laughs> woman of the camp. Okay. Everybody always sort of laughs at me when they, they come around and go, oh, you're a camp follower, aren't you? You know what they're like. And I say, no, certainly not. I'm on the strength. And what that means is I am paid to be with the army. And that's a very important distinction. I am allowed to follow the army. I have been declared clean by our surgeons. So I'm free of disease. <laughs> okay. And what do I do? I don't do the cooking. The soldiers can all cook perfectly well. They can all sew a button on perfectly well. I'm not their mother. Okay. Well, I often feel like I am. Right. What I do is I'm a lawn dress. And I am paid four pence per soldier. So you'd have a company of soldiers which could be about a hundred soldiers in a company. Okay? Uh, and, and then uh, I would have ten soldiers assigned to me and they would stop their pay before they went down the club. Okay? And I would charge them four pence uh, to do their laundry a week. So that's a nice little earner for me. That's 40 pence a week, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> So they wouldn't be able to clean their wooden outfits very often. They would get issues with a uniform every year. But they're all wearing wool, aren't they? And they would wear that wool in India, in the low countries where it's very damp and you've never been to Belgium or uh, In the War of 1812 in America, where I understand it's very hot. Uh, so they'd wear those uniforms everywhere. They didn't have Oh, let's go to a hot country and have a completely lightweight and uh, uh, you know, quite uniform. In fact, what they often wore for doing uh, dirty work was a white jacket. And that's, you think, well, why the heck have the lightest body of this hand of, you know, hauling wood around? And it's because it's undyed, it's cheap fabric. But that's why. So you see some of them maybe in their undress jackets, which just have the collars and cuffs that are red. So, let's get back to me, because it's all about me. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, life was hard everywhere. So, was it hard in the army? Of course it was. But I'd get fairly regular meals. I'd get paid. And back home, what's happening? Something called the Industrial Revolution, apparently. So, all of my cottage industry is getting taken over by looms. So, there I am, weaving a piece of cloth. And it's only as wide as I can stretch to the end of my shuttle. But they've got machines that can do it twice as wide and twice as fast. So my business is going out of business. So actually joining the army is quite a good idea.
elected as Coach Brandon's second. And we also have presently Surgeon Trevevi and Maureen. The duties of the seconds, a lot of it was to try to talk them out of the duel. Um, but in Hollywood, you don't tend to get this, so let's get on with it. <laughs> We all know how it looks. The principal, the weapons haven't been loaded and checked by the second. The principal stand back to back with the pistols raised in the air. This is the classic stand that you see The uh, pistols are then brought to full uh, cop. And as we all know, they then take 10 paces, which we will count down slowly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. As we get to pace number nine, one of the, uh, Mr. Willoughby, the blackguard, turns and fires early. But he misses. Colonel Brandon, the more honourable partner, turns on 10, takes careful aim at Mr. Willoughby, who's now trembling, has to remain in position, whilst Colonel Brandon takes careful aim. However, Colonel Brandon points his pistol up in the air and fires his shot, deloping, this is known as. Therefore, neither party has been injured. Now there's only one thing wrong with the way that this has been dubbed. It's total rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> this is not an open thing for spark bombs into a pan where there is powder. This powder ignites and flashes as the main charge in the barrel, which explodes and the ball flies out of the end. So we've just returned back to our Airbnb um, after a very pleasant afternoon in the centre of Bath. So I just thought I would finish up the video um, and say goodbye to you all. Uh, and I just thought I would just quickly show you some of the purchases that I've made here this weekend. I actually didn't buy very much at the fair this year, um, obviously partly because I was trading so you know, it's not always easy to get away from the stall. Um, when you're supposed to be working it, it's a bit naughty to go off and do uh, and do some trade <laughs> and do some shopping when you're supposed to be working. Um, but I did briefly um, nip off in the afternoon during a quiet spell and um, and one of the things I was hoping to buy was a new 
bonnet from Farthingales um, and frustratingly, although but it's completely my own fault, is there was a bonnet which you would have seen it in my previous videos from Bath last year. Um, I tried it on back then, yeah, 12 months ago and actually um, Cherise had it on her website um, prior to that as well so it's probably been a good 18 months I've been eyeing up this bonnet, this beautiful blue and black striped bonnet um, that it didn't quite match my uh, petrol linen spencer that I if you can hear any noises in the background it's probably our, our Airbnb host in the in the kitchen and um, a couple of doors away so I apologize if you can hear that um, Yes, so I didn't buy the, the bonnet at the time because it didn't quite match the colours of my outfit um, so I opted for the other uh, bluey green bonnet that, I, that you've seen me wearing and I left that behind but it's been sat on her website <laughs> for the last year and when I looked over the stores uh, before we opened um, yesterday morning it was still there she had it on the stool yesterday morning and I was like right if it's still there at the end of the day it's mine I'm having it so then of course when I went back uh, a little later on in the day it was gone so yes sadly it was not meant to be um, so I'm trying not to be too bitter about it, <laughs> but there's some, <laughs> there's some lucky lady is, is wandering around the streets above somewhere with my bonnet on her head <laughs> Never mind, I'm sure I'll come across another beautiful bonnet um, to make an outfit for at some point. Um, so yeah, so then the only other thing I bought from the market this year, I'm really sorry, my camera keeps spinning on its little stand, it won't sit, stay. Um, so the only other thing I bought um, actually at the festival fair itself um, is this vintage pearl necklace uh, this was from uh, laughing with Lizzie um, and her uh, little store that she has there as well um, you can follow her on on Instagram um, if you're interested uh, and she hosts some fabulous balls as well uh, throughout the year um, I do hope to get to one of those at some point um, but yeah so uh, yeah so that's everything that I bought just at the festival fair um, and then you will have probably seen this morning um, while we were dashing through the, the streets of Bath on our way to the picnic. Um, I basically we were passing one of the charity shops in Bath and in the window they had a straw boater and on the first glance it looked to be a vintage straw boater. So shop was open, I had to stop, go in and check, see how much it was because I was like oh no I'm not going to be able to afford this, this is probably not going to be worth, couldn't see the price in the window so I thought well I'll go ask, you never know. Um, and yeah you'll probably see Mr BLC I think took some sneaky footage of me um, trying the hat on um, because it was a very good price and it's a very good straw boater. Um, so what is this? So yes this is yeah a very very good quality, certainly uh, vintage. Um, how vintage? I'm not 100% sure, um, but one way you can tell that uh, you know how well made a, a good straw boat is is how solid it is. That's yeah, that's pretty solid. Um, and since we've had it back um, at our Airbnb, um, I've had a quick look on Google um, because it has got. A name inside uh, this label is just a charity shop label um, you can see uh, they had 24 pounds on it um, but the lady took 20 um, which is a very good price for a, a proper vintage straw boater um, and yeah you can see it has a name inside um, it's called the Ridgemont make and a quick bit of Google foo um, appears to be this was a trademark of a company called uh, Vice and Sons and Co. That's Vice spent, spelt V-Y-S-E and uh, they s appear to certainly date back to the 1840s as uh, straw hat makers um, and, um, and I can't 100% figure out when the Ridgemont make um, was established um, but they certainly had 
uh, the Vice and Sons Company certainly had a um, a factory um, on Ridgemont Road in St Albans, so that appears to be where the name comes from. And uh, uh, yeah, so I've got a feeling it is um, possibly mid twentieth century. It could be a little bit earlier. I'm not sure, but it's in very good condition. A little bit of damage um, on the the uh, the straw around the edge. Um, but it's it's not really affecting the, the structure of the straw hat too much um, and it's in better condition than my current straw hat that you'll have seen me wear a lot with um, my Edwardian pieces um, so I think it's more of a 1980s uh, straw hat but it's not as solid as this and unfortunately it's um, starting to show that it's been <laughs> worn a lot and um, there's getting a few holes in it here and there and the edges is getting a bit quite damaged so yeah it was in desperate need of trying to find a new straw boater and this is it now obviously i've got my hair is up in a high bun at the moment so it's but i think there we go what do we think it goes wonderfully with the regency outfit i know but yeah yeah so that was my purchase um and oh interestingly it, the band on it is made of paper um which i'm not really sure about um i can't say i've ever really seen that before normally you'd have a grow grain ribbon um band on here i did wonder if it's perhaps a quick and easy way for a theater company to get um you know specific colors if it's for like a chorus line or something like that um obviously print out a band on paper could be yeah quick and easy way to get the colors that you need um to get everyone to match rather than trying to source specific ribbon um especially striped ribbon so i did wonder about that a bit but yeah but that's yeah, so that's interesting and i love it when something has a um, maker's uh, label in it um so you can go and uh, go find out a little bit of history about the company so yeah it's nice to know that there is a little bit of yeah interesting british you know um manufacturing history uh, uh associated with this so that's nice uh, and then the only other thing i've bought today rustling the, stop rustling the paper um you met, again i think mr blc took some sneaky little bits of footage um i happened to see that mr b's emporium was open as we were passing uh, and mr b's is one of bath's famous uh, bookshops uh, and yeah i highly recommend if you're ever in bath uh, go and check out uh, the the bookshops um one of which is mr b's and i picked up um this copy of the starless sea by erin i get her name right erin morgenstern um and her first novel was the night circus which i read several years ago now um but it's a fabulous kind of magic meet you know meets with a kind of a victorian steampunk kind of feel to it um and yeah i really thoroughly enjoyed it and this is her second book the starless sea which i have been meaning to read for several years um and i've just never got around to picking it up um and yeah they happened to have it in and i thought well you know what i said here i shall grab myself a copy and i shall look forward to giving that a read so yeah so that is everything that i've bought um this weekend at the jane austen festival um we are still here for a couple more days um although we probably aren't going to be in costume um it'll just be a couple of relaxing days before we head home and get back to work um but if you know i'm hoping to nip into some of the the other um you know bookshops and and things in bath um and you never know what I might pick up. Um, but in the meantime, that's everything I've bought. So I'm going to end this vlog here. Um, so if it's not been quite as exciting as uh, my vlog from last year, uh, obviously this has been very much a working weekend for me. Um, but it's been fantastic. Um, and it's been so lovely to meet many of you on the stall. Um, and yeah, and of course, bring Blue Lady to you know a, a new and wider audience. Don't forget, if you want to, you can check out my previous vlogs from last year to see even more details of the adventures we got up to at the Jane Austen Festival in Bath. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you can be notified when my next videos go out. Uh, I do all sorts from out and about at historical themed events like this um, to obviously being in my sewing room uh, making outfits for said events um, so yeah it'd be great to have you along do go check out my channel if you want to see more of that kind of content 
in the meantime thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in my next video take care guys bye